Oscar Bevis, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Velas here in Liverpool. We've just had the way and I'm joined by Mr. Joe Cordina. How are you feeling, mate? Oscar, I'm good. Thank you very much. Hope you're well. I'm good, mate. I'm good. Good to see you. And uh, can't wait to see you back in the ring doing your thing on uh, on Saturday night. Like I said, just had the way and um, you come in a couple of ounces under or whatnot. You always look good anyway, but uh, looking good on the scales and I imagine just feeling good and ready. Yeah, obviously it's the uh, first time I made championship weight um, since 2019 now, so... But yeah, it's probably the easiest I've ever made weight. This 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 camp and last camp, and but I only made nine eight on the last camp. But this one was perfect. Um, yeah, I, I I've had a great camp, and um, good people around me that advise me for, with nutrition and everything else. So yeah, I look good on the scales. It's probably one of the best shapes I've ever been in. I know off to is it Piccolino's? This isn't going to go out. So you're not going to get like a swarm, a mob of people going there for food. But off out for a little bit of food now and just to sort of get something in your system and, and freshen up, I suppose. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to pop off to Piccolino's. I always go to an Italian straight yeah. after, but I always, um, I always go a couple of hours after the the weigh-in. So I let all the electrolytes, my while, while hydrate and um, all that settling um, into my body, and then. And once I've my butt that's settled, otherwise if I go for food straight away, I'll I'll be like be like a beach whale. Like I've heard about this. Like I've seen the boxes. You have them moody drinks, are like either like red or blue. And if you you take them and get the electrolytes in, if not, you literally eat and then like you balloon up sort of. Yeah. So like, the thing is, a lot of people will do, it, and I used to do it, is have the drinks and I down them, and then I want to go straight for food. But by that time, by the time you've had drinks and all that, and that settles in your stomach, yeah. Like I said, you're like a beach whale and you can't move. So, yeah, it's a bit too much, I think. Um, so, leaving here a couple of hours, let everything settle, um, let it get into your body, and then and then um, go for food. And then I think it's uh, it's going to be nice. Then. It'll be more enjoyable. And all in preparation for a Saturday night. Is there a bit of pressure? Last time out, you looked a bollocks. You knocked someone out in one round. Um, you're going to do that again, yeah? Well, th- do you know what? That's the plan. Um, Obviously, you never look for a knockout. I'm, I'm, I'm telling lies here. But it, it, the plan is to go out there and execute everything we've been working on in camp. Um, it was a pretty much a last-minute opponent, but he's a good caliber. He's 13 and 0, same record as me. Just I got one more stoppage than him, um, and I've watched him. He's tricky, good boxing skill. But I get them to dance to my tune, not the other way around. So it didn't matter who was going to be in there, whether it was someone that comes forward or someone boxes on the back foot or tries to be awkward. Um, when I'm in there, it's, it's completely different um, to when people watch me. When I, in, I can I can make someone, how can I say, well, basically dance to my, to my tune, which that's what I, what I plan on doing on Saturday night. I mean, you're on the cusp of a world title fight. Um, you know that. We've all have heard Eddie say that as well. Um, is there kind of not much that you have to show people now? We know how good you are. We know what you're about. It's basically at this stage about, all right, you want to look good, but it's basically just about winning. You need to keep winning because you've done your fights where you've shown us what you're about and you're, you kind of, you're not learning anymore. You're a world-level fighter and you've just got to win, really. Yeah, um, that's the main thing. i just got to win. But I can't look at what's um, in the background. So I've got to, um, basically, I've, got, I've just got to concentrate on what's in front of me on Saturday because there could be banana skins that are going to come up um, and potentially this could be one, but I'm not going to allow that. I'm going to go out and put on a clinical performance and get the win and then, then move on after that and we'll think about what comes on uh, beyond Saturday. But um, the main thing is focus on that, get the win, no cuts, no injuries, no bruises, and try and try and put on a, a great performance without taking any big, 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 big risks. I'm not going to butcher his name, the poor geezer. But uh, do you know do you know much about him, Miko? Miko, um, not too much, but I've watched a, a little bit about a little bit of him. Um, he is quite a smart boxer, uh, cute, um, good defense, um, fast hands. He can punch a bit. So yeah, he's uh, he's going to be tricky for the first few rounds and. Um, but like I said, once they get in with me, it's a bit different. Um, people can watch me all they like, but once they get in with me, it's, it's a completely different story. I know you said you don't want to look past, and I know you're not looking past that anyway, but obviously questions that we've got to ask. Um, I know when you spoke to Coogan about a week ago, you spoke about uh, Agawa and his performance and whatnot. He's now been signed by Matrim, so 
it's kind of like the extra little incentive of, right, he was on a Matchroom show, now he's been signed by Matchroom, so it's kind of edged even potentially close if you're to come through Saturday. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, it just makes it... Makes it um, the prize is bigger, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is. Of course it is. The prize is big, the carrots being dangled. So, um, yeah, but I can't focus on that. I, it, I'd be I'd be a stupid man too. So um, I'm gonna just focus on Saturday. Focus on who's in front of me, which is Miko. And I'm gonna no, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try and pronounce his second name. <laughs> oh, no, I am. Catch Catch Ryanus. Yeah, I think it's something like that. But anyway, um, Miko, I gotta focus on him. Um, do a job on him and then I can enjoy my Christmas pick up in the new year and and build on my performances build on my camp and then look to whoever's in front of me then um, and whatever fight is signed so Alright Joe thank you very much uh, just a quick one that I've got to finish on obviously Conor Ben tops the bill against Chris Algieri um, another big fight for Conor on this journey on his sort of road to being a superstar um, headlining here in Liverpool um, you share camp with him. He's one of your good friends. Uh, massive fight for Connor, and um, yeah, I was going to say how's he looking, but I know he's a real gym rat, so he's probably always he always looks in good shape, and I, I know he's been banging out the training. So he's been crushing it in the gym. <laughs> Ask Tony. I didn't want to say it. Been crushing it in the gym. Yeah, nah, he's um t to be honest, like I remember when I first came down to the matchroom gym um, and trained, started training with Tony. He was he's he was pretty much a raw novice. He, he had a, he, I think he had about eight fights or something like that uh, when I first came down, but he was yeah he was pretty much a raw novice and from seeing him then to now in this, the the short space of time which is what four and a half years coming up five years and it really and truly he haven't had a lot of fights all in all and seeing how he progressed and where he's he's going and where he is and where he's going and heading to is um is quite like phenomenal because he's like I said the experience he had is literally nothing compared to someone like myself who had a lot of amateur career, uh, a long amateur career, being Olympics, Commonwealth Games. So, yeah, but I think in being around the likes of myself, uh, Martin Woods, John Ryder, um, Ricky Burns, um, Felix Cash, um, Ted Cheeseman as well, um, have brought him on, Spider Richards. I think we all bring each other on and spur each other on, and I think we progress. Uh, we're all progressing um, at the right times, and... We're all, yeah, we're all heading in the same direction, and so for, yeah, for for Connor, I think he's he's destined to be a global superstar, and I think he will he will be where his dad was. I think. Just finally, actually, um, talking about that, obviously, you talk about him being a raw novice, and I know when he had that fight with Payne, he was written off rotten, um, and he was always carrying sort of the weight of the name and whatnot. I'm not going to say he's had it the hard way because obviously he was working with Matchroom and he's had the platform there but when he's had that sort of scrutiny around his performance did you ever see at one point sort of Connor have them, them really tough times in the gym or has he always just had that look people are scrutinising me but I'm still going I'm still here listen everyone has hard times in the gym everyone go to, will, will in their career will go to the gym and they can be tough they can be asked there's always demons in the back of their mind there's, there's times I've been in the gym and I don't want to train because I've got problems at home or there's something bothering me but we still get up as boxers, as fighters, as men. We just get up, chuck it at the back of our heads and, and, and go to the gym and get the work done. But it's still lingering at the back. So, yeah, he would have had them. Um, a lot of men don't show it. Um, but, yeah, he's, he's coped with it well. He's coped with it well. He's took it on the chin. And he's bounced back after pain, pay, the pain I've had. There's a, a perfect example of looking past someone and and looking into bigger fights and future fights. So, yeah, um, I think he's 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 made that mistake in the past. He will never make that mistake again, and he's learned from it. So, I think it's a it's a good thing. Um, and yeah, I just think he's he's just progressing and progressing. I think he's he's gonna be he's gonna be um, a big problem for a lot of people in the welterweight division. All right, Joe, thank you very much for, for your time. Fingers crossed you and Connor, it all goes smoothly on Saturday and we can see him in big fights next year and you get the fight that you want and deserve. And uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of your Friday. Thank you, brother. Cheers, bro.